Welcome to another video by Enterprises Software Solutions, your number one software dudes. My name is Anthony, and today we're gonna look at licensing SQL Server. I know this is boring and this is unnecessary complex, but the goal of the video today is to set you up so that you can have a basic understanding on where to get started in licensing SQL Server in your environment. So we're first gonna take a look at the additions of SQL Server. So that at the top, the best, the most expensive, is the enterprise version of SQL Server. This is all the features, no compute, no memory limitations. The only limitations you're gonna run into are the limitations of the hardware you're running on and the operating system you're using. Then, one step down, you have SQL Server Standard. This is limited to 24 cores, 120 gigs of memory, and it, and it is lacking in some of the enterprise features. We're not going to get into the specific features, uh, but know that there is a feature difference between Standard and Enterprise. And then down at the bottom, we have both Express and Developer. These are both free editions of SQL Server. The difference being that Express is limited to one socket or four cores, so one socketed processor or four cores, and then one, gigs of, one gig of memory that the database can use, as well as 10 gig database size. So you can use SQL Server Express on a device that has more than one gig of memory. However, the database engine will not use more than one gig of memory. And then you also have Developer. And Developer is free and it's only licensed for development. So it is the enterprise version of SQL Server, but you cannot use it for production workloads. So it's, it's for development specifically. So these additions are all licensed slightly differently. So we touched on Express, we touched on Developer. Let's take a look at Enterprise and Standard. So Enterprise is licensed per core. And we'll get into what per core licensing is in one of the next slides. Standard is either per core license or a server plus cal model. And we'll get into what that is in a couple slides. So core licensing is referring to processor cores. So you're literally getting licenses for your cores. So in the case of SQL Server, one core license covers two processor cores. And you have to have at least two licenses minimum. So your SQL Server minimum is licensed for four cores or in a physical operating system environment, so OSE, Hyperthreading doesn't count. So these are physical cores in a physical operating system or virtual cores in a virtual operating system. So core licensing, if you are deciding between core and server cal as you would with standard, but remember enterprise is only core licensed, core licensing is best when you cannot count the number of users that you will be using your platform. So for instance, if you have a web backend or some kind of SaaS software, or when the number of users is high enough the core licensing is actually cheaper. So you, there will be instances where you are not don't have very many users, so it makes more sense to do a server cal model. Uh, and if you want some more information on licensing by cores, there's some edge cases. Microsoft covers everything at this link here. So the other model, server cal. So in this case, the server license covers the SQL server itself. And then each cal or client access license covers all the users or devices. And the distinction between a user and a device cal is only that they apply to one or the other. This, the license is the same either way. And the way you pick between you getting a user cal or a device cal is by knowing that a user cal is assigned to a user. And so that user is entitled to access the SQL server from any device. Whereas if you license the device, that device is licensed to access the SQL server by any user. So if you have a lot of users and a few devices, license the devices. If you have a lot of users with a lot of devices, license the users. And again, make sure and compare the cost to core licensing. Sometimes it's really simple comparison. Sometimes it's not so simple. We're always here to help you out. When it comes to virtualizing SQL Server, there are a couple of things to be aware of. When we talked about core licensing. We found out that core licenses can apply to the physical cores of a physical operating system. So if it's an operating system that's installed straight onto the hardware. And so if that is a virtualization host and you licensed all of the cores of the host operating system, now you can deploy as many SQL servers as you have physical cores on that box. So this means that you can over provision their processors on each of them, but just be aware you will be limited by the hardware. And then in a server cal model, if you are virtualizing them, you still have to license each virtual machine or container with a server license. However, one user with one cal can access any of your SQL servers. So you don't have to license 
each user multiple times to be able to access multiple servers. So again, this adds some complexity to the core versus server cal cost comparison. And we're gonna throw in another wrench here with software assurance. So with software assurance, this adds some additional features. So for instance, if you have active software assurance, which is an additional uh, ongoing fee to Microsoft, you can also license passive standby SQL servers. So these are SQL servers that are not doing anything except possibly replicating data to them. So they're not active, they're not serving uh, users or devices, they're just passive. Software Assurance also allows you to license all physical cores on a host and then have unlimited SQL VMs. Again, you will be limited by the hardware, so it's not some black magic to give you unlimited SQL servers, but it makes it so that you can have a lot of smaller VMs if you want. You'd also with Software Assurance, you can reassign your licenses more frequently. So without Software Assurance, we're looking at once every 90 days. With Software Assurance, you can do it more frequently. And also with Software Assurance, you get to use the hybrid benefit with your SQL licenses. So you can run SQL Server on-premise with Software Assurance and run the same number of SQL servers in Azure with your hybrid benefit uh, for a time period while the intention being that you intend to migrate. And if you do migrate, then those licenses can move with your SQL farm into Azure or you can choose to stay on-prem if that works better for you. And also, and arguably the most important part about software assurance is that it gives you version upgrade rights. So if you have SQL Server 19, which is the current version, you have active software assurance. When SQL Server 2022 comes out, you will be entitled to upgrade. If you're still confused about software assurance, check out this link from Microsoft, a lot of good information there. And if you are even still confused about SQL Server licensing, which I'm gonna be honest, it confuses me. I look at the documentation whenever we have to deal with these things definitely reach out to us. We have licensed certified experts on staff. We're happy to help you through, get this figured out. And if you decide to purchase from us, that's fine. If you don't, that's not a problem. But either way, remember, Enterprise Software Solutions is your number one software dudes. Thank you for watching.